Hello, my name is Christopher DeLay. I'm a premier field engineer from Microsoft. I mostly work with customers with public key infrastructure and certificates, and today I'm going to be covering how to revoke orphan certificates. So before we get into that, it's probably good to talk about what orphan certificates are. So uh, if you have a CA in your environment, you need to be concerned about these orphan certificates because it is a potential security um, risk for your environment. So the deal with uh, orphan certificates is if you have a CA that issues certificates, there is a scenario where you can actually issue certificates and then not be aware that you've issued those certificates. The particular scenario here is laid out in the graphic on the screen. So what happens in that scenario is if you back up a CA at let's say time zero, and uh, after the CA is backed up, of course the CA is going to continue to be a CA, so that CA is going to continue to issue certificates, issue CRILs, do its normal day-to-day -day things. Well, if the CA then fails at time one, as illustrated in the graphic, your next, your next step is going to be disaster recovery, right? My CA has failed, let me get it back online. So you're going to go ahead and restore from backup. So the one problem with this whole scenario here is that the certificates that we've issued before, uh, after the original backup, but before the failure, we don't have any record of those certificates because those, those issued certificates are normally contained within the CA database. And so when you back up the CA, you get the CA database, and so you have a record of that, but those things that are issued after the backup, you no longer have a record of. And so you're going to want to have a record of those certificates for a lot of reasons. A, you want to know what certificates you've issued. You want to have knowledge of that. And B, if you do run into some you know, compromise or some security issue, you may want to revoke those certificates. And if you don't have awareness of those, then there's no way for you to go ahead and do that. So today we're going to talk about how you can revoke orphan certificates. Now, in order to revoke orphan certificates, you still are going to have to have knowledge of them somehow, so somehow outside of the CA database. So there's a couple ways that you can do that. Um, probably the easiest and cheapest, well not necessarily the easiest, but the cheapest way to do it is the SMTP exit module. So in my previous blog posting on my site here, uh, http colon slash slash blogs dot technet dot com slash b slash xdot509, I covered the SMTP exit module, and so you can kind of go ahead and read that blog to get more detail. Essentially the SMTP exit module will send emails for when actions take place on the CA and one of those actions include issuing certificates and those emails for issued certificates will include things like the serial number which is something we can actually use to later on create like a, a fake certificate or a certificate with the same serial number as the orphan certificate and go ahead and revoke that so you will need some method to capture what search you've issued and the serial number of those certs that's outside of the CA database and in this example we're using the SMTP exit module. So we're going to talk about how we can go back and potentially you know add these certs back in the database. We're not going to get the same cert back because it's gone and it's out there but we can kind of create like a, a fake cert and put it in the database to take the place of the one that we lost and then we can revoke that and since the information that's included in the actual CRL or certificate revocation list is the serial number that's the main information that we need to be able to do this. So I'm going to go through and walk through an example in my, my test environment to kind of show how this can happen. So if we go ahead here's my here's my CA let me minimize some of these things in the background. So here's my CA and if we go ahead and we take a look we see that I've issued certs. So I've issued certs 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So there's actually a total of, uh, right now there's a total of 7 certificates in here. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and back up my uh, CA. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to go here in the CA, C, C drive. And I have a backup folder. I'm going to delete my previous backup. So I want to back up the CA. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm just going to kind of back it up through the uh, graphical interface here. So I'm just going to do all tasks, backup CA. And in this scenario, I'm just going to back up the CA database and log files. And I'm going to go ahead and back those up to my C backup f folder. And so I've gone ahead and I've backed up the CA database. The CA Database is going to include things like revoked certificates, issued certificates, pending requests, failed requests. All those sort of things are going to be stored within the database. The most important as far as what we're looking at here are issued certificates. So I've gone ahead and I've backed up my database. So let's say 
um, I go ahead and I issue certs. To make it kind of simple, I'm just going to go ahead and issue one cert. So let me just open up Cert Manager here. And I'm just going to request a new cert. And so this is going through querying Active Directory, and in a minute here we should be prompted for which type of certificate I would like to enroll for. So I'm just going to pick Administrator here, and I'm going to click Enroll. And so this will go through and talk to Active Directory and talk to the CA, so it'll take a second uh, for this to go through and enroll for a certificate. So when this goes through and enrolls for a certificate, there's going to be a, a new certificate for the user. We're going to see it show up in the database. And since I do have the SMTP exit module, we should go ahead and see me get an email that informs me that I've issued a certificate as well. So we finish, so we see in here, we're gonna have a new certificate. This is the last one here, issued today. And if we refresh the CA here, you see that we have a new uh, certificate in the database as well. And then we see we've got an email indicating that that cert was issued and we'll come back to this in a bit but it does have the serial number here which I mentioned before is important for this process okay so I've issued this new cert so let's say my CA fails something goes terribly wrong and I need to go ahead and restore my CA so <coughs> we're gonna go through and just use the graphical interface to restore the CA so I'm just gonna go restore CA stop the services and then I'm just going to select Certificate Database and Certificate Database Log Files. I'm then going to go ahead and browse to my C Backup Directory. I'm going to select that and finish restoring. Um, yes, that's fine. You see I'm getting email alerts. Since I have the SMTP exit module, I'm getting email alerts about other things that happen on the CA, like the service stopping and starting. And so the service is going to go ahead and start. And so if we go ahead and look in issued certificates, we'll see I'm now missing that certificate that I had just issued. And this is the orphan certificate scenario. So if I didn't have the SMTP exit module, I would never have any knowledge that I've issued this certificate. Now that certificate would still be out there in the wild. It would still be valid. It would still chain. It would still work for everything. And that's the concern. I now have this cert out there that can be used for things, but I don't know about it and I have no way to revoke it. But in my scenario, I'm using the SMTP exit module. So I do have a way to go ahead and, and know that I have issued that certificate. So I am going to want to go ahead, um, in, order to do, in order to revoke an orphan certificate, the first thing I need to do is create like a fake certificate that includes that same serial number. So what I'm going to need to do is I am going to need to go get that serial number. Um, so let me go ahead and go in here in my serial number. So I'm looking for that last issued certificate. And here's my serial number. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that right there. Then I'm going to open up a elevated command prompt. You can do this in a number of ways. And let me just, uh, I'll just cd into the C drive for now. <coughs> so I'm just going to do cert util dash sign. And then I'm going to paste in the serial number here. And then I'm just going to give it a name for it. I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to call it test dot, uh, test one, oh, test one, two, three dot CR. So I hit enter there. It's going to prompt me for which certificate, actually kind of which private key I want to sign that request with, but it's going to show me it in the form of a certificate. And so I need to sign it with the same CA keys that were used to sign the original certificate in order to be able to go ahead and revoke it. Um, at least on this CA. So I need to do it on the same CA if I'm going to revoke it because that's where, that's where client, clients are going to check for revocation. So I select uh, the CA certificate, I click OK, it goes through and finishes and creates that certificate. So if I go here in my C drive, I do have that test123 cert. So the next thing I need to do is I need to import it into the CA database so the CA has knowledge of it. Once the CA has knowledge of it, I can go ahead and revoke it. So I'm going to go ahead and do cert util dash import cert and that the name of that was test123.cer 
and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it says it's been imported, so let me go ahead and take a look at my CA and see if it has. Let me refresh that. Uh, it has been imported. You'll see that it has the same serial number as my previously issued cert, my, my orphan cert. So it's now here in the database. So now if I want to go ahead and revoke it, it's pretty straightforward. I can do all tasks. I can do revoke certificate. Next, I need to choose a re reason code. I'll just, I'll just select cease of operation here and click yes. So now the certificate has been revoked. So I probably want to update my krill so that rev revoke certificate is included in there. So I'll just, um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do cert util space dash CRL. I'll just go ahead and do it through the GUI since I'm right here. So I'll just do all tasks, um, publish. and that should have went through and published a new krill. So if we go ahead and take a look at the CRL here, well actually it still hasn't revoked yet, so it's asking us to publish it. Okay, that's fine. Publishing my new krill, so it's gonna go out there and make that available. So now let me go to uh, properties and let me view the krill. And if I view the krill and look in the revocation list, you'll see I have two certs, one that I revoked yesterday and one that I revoked today. You want to go ahead and compare that up to the serial number of the cert. Um, you'll see that that serial number goes ahead and matches there. So I've now revoked the cert. The cert's in the krill. I mean, the the serial number of the cert is in the krill, so it should show up as revoked. If we want to actually do some testing, I, normally you wouldn't have a copy of the cert, but I do have a copy of the cert since this is sort of a test environment. So we can go ahead and check and verify that that krill is showing up as revoked. So I'm just going to go ahead and export that original cert out of the database, uh, the original cert out of the um, user store here. So this was the one that was the orphan cert. So I'm just going to copy this to a file. Now, like I said, normally you wouldn't have access to this if it w access to the cert if it was an orphan cert. But again, this is kind of a test scenario, so we do have access to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this on the C drive as well. And I'm just going to call it um, my cert. Uh, let's try that again. Okay. So what I can do now is I can just go ahead and bring up cert util. So I just want to bring up a command prompt. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's do this. Clear everything out here, and then we're just going to do cert util dash verify dash URL fetch. Um, name of the cert, so we called that my cert. And then we're gonna pipe the output of this to a verify.txt file. So what will happen is, so th what's gonna happen is when I run this command, it's gonna go ahead and validate the cert. So it's gonna build the chain, see if it chains to a trusted root. It's gonna check to see whether the AIA and CDP locations are available, and it's gonna check to see if it's revoked. And it's gonna do this for the entire chain. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, and that's going to go through. And it does take a couple seconds because it does have to go out to those URLs and download content, as well as go through and verify the um, all the certificates in the chain as well. So now I'm just going to go ahead and open that, and I'm just going to do verify.txt. And so um, the output, I mean, it looks kind of confusing at first. After viewing a number of these, it gets a little bit easier to kind of understand what's going on here. But the, essentially the first cert in the chain is being evaluated here. Then we'll see the next cert in the chain gets evaluated and so on. But the key here is at the end we see that um, the leave certificate revocation check passed. Okay. So that's not exactly what we were looking for. <coughs> um, the reason for that potentially is that the client will go ahead and cache information about the krill. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if I go ahead and look at my cert, this was the one that I actually issued yesterday. This was not the one that I've issued today. Um, so let me go back in the CA uh, cert manager console and see if I can see the one that I've issued today. So let me refresh this. Oh, here's my one. For some reason, it was uh, just uh, different in the list. So this is the one with the original serial number. So uh, 
basically we just need to go through and do the same step. So I'll just go through and copy this one to a file and we do not want to export the key. So at least you know what a successful uh, output looks like. So this was not the certificate that I revoked but you'll see here that there is basically it goes through the chain, checks each certificate in the chain, checks the AIA and CDP location. So this is an example of a successful um, check here. So we're just going to go ahead and save this out to a file. I'm just going to overwrite the original one. Uh, sure, next, finish, okay. Uh, let me go out of my C drive, delete this. And then I'm going to go ahead and run the same command again. So go ahead, we're going to go ahead and run verify.txt, open the text file, and if I could type I would be dangerous. And so it's going to go through and check. So if we go through and check this one, we see this right now that we're actually checking the right certificate with the right serial number here. So um, serial number is listed right here. So we're going through and checking this and we see at the end that the certificate actually does show up as revoked now that we've chosen the right certificate. So certificate is revoked. So in, in this video we've gone through and shown you how you can revoke orphan certificates. Now the key to this entire process is that you have to have some knowledge of certificates that you've issued that's outside the CA database. Some folks will talk to you and say, well, you should back up the CA more frequently. So the more frequently you back up the CA, the less, um, the, 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 the less amount of certificates you're going to have that are orphan, right? But even if you back up your CA like every five minutes, you're still going to potentially have orphan certificates. So there's no way to kind of get around that. Um, you know, how often you back up is really deter determined, you know, by how important the PKI is to your environment, how important certs are. Um, how much downtime you can have for the CAs and a number of factors but typically on average I would tell customers to back up the CA at least once a day so you know if you ever had a failure in a restore you'd have whatever number of certificates you normally issued as a in a day orphan so at least with the SMTP exit module I have a way outside of the CA database that I can go ahead and see what certs I've issued and now you have this process here where you can go through and not only do that, but you also know how you can revoke these certificates if you need to. Okay, that covers everything that I needed to cover uh, today. Thank you all for watching, and be sure to uh, check out the article at my blog. Thank you.